I didn't really run out of stories. I just had to think about some of them to make sure that I was going to tell them right and not incriminate anybody. Because when I tell a bad date story, I should be the only one who looks like an idiot. So here goes. Bad date story number 11, which puts us one ahead of the Friday the 13th franchise for those of you who are keeping count. This is one of the early bad dates, not long after I got my car. And we met via Bumble, the dating app, the one that is the source of all my misery when it comes to bad date stories, and had a mutual love of pizza and horror films and seemed like a good match. Uh, the only problem was this date was about two hours away in Tennessee. So I hopped in my car. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen, right? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, this is the story of the Valentine's date, which is totally coincidental. We just happened to meet and match and have mutual evenings off on Valentine's Day for whatever reason fate decided to throw that curveball at me so I headed down and I was fully prepared to cook which is not a surprise and had a bit of trouble finding where to park or where to find this person I was on the date with uh, it was one of those situations where I was driving around a, an apartment complex on the phone with her going, um, so you said 170, and she's like, yeah, I'm in the 5200s or something, and she's like, no, it's over here. Did you see the street name? It's near the mailbox line. There's lots of mailboxes. Which mailboxes are you talking about? And finally, she decided to come outside and wave me down, and what I remember distinctly about this is it was a really warm day for February. It was like middle 60s or low 70s when I headed down. So I was wearing a t-shirt and a fairly lightweight leather jacket compared to the heavyweight leather jackets that I sometimes wear in the wintertime. Um, I was wearing a black shirt. Big surprise there. Um, and so I made it to her house without a hitch got in, got settled down, um, started cooking. She goes, and my brother lives here, so let's make sure that we invite him to, uh, I was like, invite him to see a date. I understand shared expenses and all that, but luckily I was prepared to cook for more than a few people. I usually end up with lots of leftovers when I cook. That's what happens when you have a German mom. So we cooked and her brother shows up and he's six feet eight. And he kind of looked at me like another one of you, huh? And so as soon as we were done eating, we put up the leftovers. I tried to do the dishes and apparently offended her somehow by not knowing how to use a dishwasher because never have, probably never will. Um, so we got everything put away. Uh, her brother went in his room and found a way to entertain himself. And she's like, hey, you want to run down to Walgreens and get something to drink? I was like, well, that would probably leave me stuck here because I can't drink and drive, you know, the Tennessee and Kentucky tops. And she's like, it's okay if you spend the night. I was like, oh, if I haven't mentioned it before, I'm a little bit naive. So anyway, we went and I was not intending to party because I think it was like a Tuesday night. So I got a six pack of woodchuck cider or something made with apples and alcohol. And she grabbed um, one of those half gallon bottles of Jack, or whatever whiskey comes in a plastic half gallon size bottle. I'm not a whiskey expert, I'm more of a bourbon guy. And so we went back to her place and decided to watch a couple horror films. Um, first one we watched was 
only memorable because it was so bad that I don't remember any of it. Um, some teens went to some kind of horror theme park and there was a murderer and it reminded me of like 15 other horror films. And the other was the Halloween reboot that got Jamie Lee Curtis back into it, I think. It was whichever one came after Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. So I think that's the Jamie Lee Curtis one. Anyway, the movie ends. It's getting pretty late. I'm buzzed-ish, and she has poured herself a tumbler of whiskey and is washing down an Ambien with it. And she's like, I have trouble sleeping. Uh, you want an Ambien? And I was like, no. Um, and also, should you be mixing that much whiskey with Ambien? She's like, trust me, I'm a pharmacy tech. I know what I'm doing. It's like, okay. And she finishes her tumbler full of whiskey and she's like, we should head back to my room. And it's like, uh, <laughs> I said, isn't that Ambien and whiskey going to knock you out? She goes, I should be awake for quite a while. And so we went back and she was asleep before I got my teeth brushed, which was fine, completely fine by me. So um, I just basically ended up sitting up most of the night trying to pay attention and make sure that she didn't stop breathing or aspirate her own vomit or anything, because I have a really good reason for being paranoid when people start fucking around with pills and shit like that. And oh, I did not get any sleep that night. Um, and this is an important part of the story that will come later. <laughs> I was up in the wee small hours of the morning. Her brother got up and went to work and I took her dog out and walked him. And when all was said and done, she finally woke up and the very next thing she said to me after good morning was, so you're a teacher, right? And I was like, yeah. Can you help me with this English paper I have to do? And I was like, God damn. Yeah, sure, no problem. What is it? And uh, she was apparently studying to move along in her career from pharmacy tech to something else. But uh, I helped her come up with a thesis statement, helped her come up with some points, helped her kind of decipher the reading list because it was a little bit of a mismatched mess and helped her make sense of what the rubric said. So at that point, I considered it a failed date because I was doing homework. And so we said uh, good morning or whatever to each other. And I got back on the road with the intention of potentially having a second date. I don't know, it was a two hour drive. And I started heading back to Murray and it started to sleep. I had little to no experience driving in adverse conditions, but coming from Tennessee back to Murray, you cut through LBL. And just before that curve by the Golden Pond gun ranges, I fell asleep at the wheel. And I was going into that curve and saw my uh, speed was right about the right thing. That's the last thing I remember before nodding off and then jerking awake in time to see that I was headed straight for that guardrail. And all I could think to do was just to turn into it. So instead of hitting it head on, I kind of scraped alongside it, which I did. And when I came off the guardrail, I was still going way too fast. I didn't really have the experience of the presence of mind to take my foot off the gas uh, and overcorrected and ended up in a gully and just buried myself to the axles trying to get back out of it. But luckily there was no cell service in there. So I kind of had to hike up and down till somebody pulled over and I finally was able to get on the phone, get a tow truck out. And uh, <laughs> it was just the most bizarre chain of events because I was wearing the light t-shirt and jacket that I wore. It's 37 degrees and sleeting. And the tow truck driver, who's 
wearing one of those hats that says which war he was in and that he's a veteran looks at me up and down and I'm like shaking from the cold and he goes, stop shaking, you're alive, ain't you? And it's like, it's 37 degrees and I'm wearing a t-shirt. I'm not, uh, fuck it. So the car was drivable once it got winched out, got back on the road, called my mom up, came up with a suitably believable story, which later got shot to shit because I admitted to her I fell asleep at the wheel at some point and she gave me 16 kinds of hell. But um, called her up and this is something I hope my future potential kids say to me too. First thing I want you to know is I'm perfectly fine, but you know, I think that's considerate. However, I was on hiatus from telling bad date stories for a while. And mostly because some of the other ones get a little bit more detailed, not in any embarrassing way. I just want to make sure if I do tell these stories, nobody gets implicated or, or anything else. Like I said at the beginning, these are supposed to make me look like an idiot, not anybody else. And I did look like an idiot. Um, it cost about $5,000 to put my car back into shape. And I had to ride around in some kind of little Hyundai mess that was shaped like a jelly bean with wheels. And I really, really made sure to ask all of my friends who were experienced drivers, have you got any suggestions on how to stay awake? And 99% of them said, well, how much coffee do you drink? And I was like, oh God, that's another big embarrassing story that I don't have time to get into. Any other suggestions? Um, but yeah, this is the first of probably a slew of new bad date stories. So be prepared, take care, and have a good one.